So I'm going to show you really fast how you can use proxies on your Mac Mini M1 chip and speed up your workflow even faster but not quite as fast as we're going to move on to the sponsored segment from Artlist is an affordable way to license all the music you need for your projects whether it's personal, commercial, TV, podcasts, YouTube, Facebook you get the point, you name it, it's covered no more worrying if your music licensing covers your project one worldwide license that covers it all Oh, and that's not all. Artlist also includes tons of sound effects and the music is updated daily, so you never run out of choice. If you're wondering, how did I get all these nice shots of B-roll, well, it's called Artgrid, a site similar to Artlist but for video. Artgrid can provide all the stock footage you need from HD to 8K, profile formats, log or graded, to assure that it can be personalized and fitted to your current project. And Artgrid works the same as Artlist, one worldwide license that covers it all. So it's simple, choose the license that you need and that fits your budget and enjoy the unlimited downloads without any extra cost added. Get two extra months for free when you join Artgrid or Artlist through the links provided. Check out Artlist and Artgrid in the video description below. So there are two ways how you can make proxies. One is in the beginning of creating the project and that way whatever files you drag onto the project it automatically starts creating proxies for them. And the second way is when you already have a project but you want to make proxies for certain files and I'm going to show you that as well. We're going to start with creating the project. When making a new project there are a few things that you can do over here but the most important thing about proxies is moving on to the second tab which is ingest settings. In fact it's a third tab and this is where you can make the project create proxies for you automatically. Tick the inject box and then underneath here we're going to select create proxies. And now there's different presets that you can use to make proxies. The golden rule is when you're on Windows try using H.264 codec and as low resolution as you possibly can because the lower the resolution is the faster your playback will be and if you're on Mac try to use the QuickTime format which is ProRes format. Now if one or the other doesn't work quite well you can also mix them around but that's the golden rule okay. So we are on the Mac Mini over here at the moment so we want to create ProRes low resolution proxy Okay, and proxy destination is same as the project just to keep the file organization the best. We're gonna press OK. So now whatever footage you drag onto there, it will start to make proxies for you automatically. So for example, if I've got this red 8K clip over here, I'm gonna import it over here and see what happens over here. As you can see, the media encoder has launched automatically and it's gonna start make proxies for it automatically once it figures out what it has to do. As you can see the media encoder is open, it's already rendering it over here and it renders it really really fast. So this is a red K what 6 clip or whatever, it's already done. This is how fast it was. Now when we go back to over here and let's drag it to the timeline just to show you the timeline performance. As you can see the timeline performance is quite well, quite good but if we press it on full resolution and press play see what happens we're dropping a lot of frames it can't play it. The way how you can play it is select this thing over here toggle proxies once this is enabled now it uses proxies instead of the big files so if I press play now on full screen full resolution 8k it doesn't drop any frames. If you don't see that proxy button over here you can click this enter or little plus button over here and you can drag this proxy button down there onto your quick view of the buttons in there. So basically that's how fast you can use. This is 8K RAW and look at the playback performance. It is ridiculous compared to without the proxies. Ah, 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 ah. No, can't do, can't do, can't quite do it. If you are rendering out the video and you have your proxies button enabled, don't worry, it's still gonna use the original files, not the proxy files, unless you tell the program to do that. Now, the second way how you can use proxies is when you are already in the project, but you haven't set up the automatic proxies in the first place. Now, this is another project where the automatic proxies have not been selected, and how you can create proxies is very simple. Go on your project folder and whatever files you want to create proxies you can select one or many files just click right click you can do the same if you select multiple clips right click proxy 
and create proxies and then you are greeted with exactly the same folder as you saw in the beginning of the video where you can choose whether you want h.264 windows or quicktime for mac so we are on quicktime and then low resolution proxy over here if i when i press ok it's going to move them to media encoder as you can see it's going to create these proxy jobs and if i'm going to open the media encoder over here you can see it's already rendering these proxies and then once they have been rendered it's exactly the same press the proxy button and then there you go this is a very simple way how you can speed up your workflow on the mac mini when you have to use a premiere pro when it's not utilized or optimized perfectly for the m1 chip but you can still get awesome timeline performance using this simple proxy tip thanks very much guys for watching hit that like button if you found it helpful subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.